Obviously, big news with basketball. Michigan hired its man in Dusty May, Florida Atlantic coach. Um, as expected, I'm buying into the hire more and more after it happens, right? That, that tends mm -hmm. to go. Um, you know, Brock, you and I talked about these candidates last week. I think what's really come clear, and Josh maybe can get into this, I think we both said, like, look, getting Ots from Iowa State was probably the dream scenario. I think that was probably our top pick. That's yeah. a guy that that's done it at a P5 level in the Big 12, which is arguably the best basketball conference. You know, he's his third stop in Iowa State. Feels like he's pretty comfortable staying there. Really wasn't an option. Dusty May, Darian DeVries was another name who it looked early last week. Him and West Virginia were just synced from the beginning. There, there was just no way that wasn't going to happen. That has happened. Dusty May, by all accounts, was going to Louisville. Yep. You yeah, know, that 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 felt like a, a a done deal in many ways. And again, Josh will probably get into this. The the discourse over Ward Manual on this hire is just borderline hilarious to me. But anyway, calls up John Beeline, who has been involved in this process basically from the beginning. As soon as Ward reached out to him to gauge any potential interest in coming back, once it was like, yeah, not really, but maybe in a you know, let me help out advise. Meets him in Florida with Dusty May, talks some program notes. Beeline leaves the room and Ward closes the deal and gets Dusty May. At the end of the day, you know, I think home run hire is a very odd term. I think it largely just means a big name that everybody knows, <laughs> right? Uh, May was the top target of this cycle. Ohio State, mm -hmm. May was their top target until Jake Diebler gave them no choice but to keep him. We know he was Louisville's top choice, and, and, and Michigan gets him. I think it's a big hire, obviously. How good will he be or not? We don't know. And nobody knows, right? I do know some ball knowers, guys that know basketball better than me, seem intrigued and excited about the hire. So point is, they went out, they got their guy, and we are in a new era. But, uh, Josh, if you want to talk about just the pursuit, Beeline's involvement, just, just kind of how this happened. Because, yeah, what was it, Friday, Saturday morning, that, that coaching board was starting to look a little, a little rough with a non-Dusty May hire. Yeah, yeah, Michigan would have been in a tough spot if if they couldn't have landed Dusty May. I mean, it was clear from the start that he was Ward Manuel's number one guy. Um, and credit goes to Ward Manuel for for you know us, utilizing his resources, um, going out there and, and getting his guy and and changing flight plans to meet up with with May and and you know coincidentally meeting and all and and getting all that stuff done over the line. I think. Um, I think it was just a great job. I mean, yeah, people will say what they want about, about Ward Manuel, but you know, in this, in this case, uh, I, I think he deserves a lot of credit for, for utilizing his resources. You know, people say, you know, people are saying, Oh, why does, why does he have to involve beeline to make a hire, you know, utilize your network. This is mm -hmm. what it's about. You have a network, utilize it. You know, it's not about, oh, I can't hire my own guy, so I got to get someone else to do it. I mean, he they got, were in the room together. For, got bad news for folks that don't know how Jim Hackett got Jim Harbaugh here. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> there was a lot of people involved in that. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's in, in any hire ever. It's not typically a one on one thing. You know, they use back channels, um, agents. They talk through people if they're in the middle of a season or whatever. I mean, it's. You know, a you know, it, it, and Michigan used the search firm too. So he was part of the Beeline was part of the advisory board on the on the search firm. So um, there's, it's just it's 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 way more nuanced than you know, a guy makes a call to a coach, pitches mission pitches at your school, and whether he accepts or denies that pitch, it's way more of that and way more complicated there's so many layers to it so um basically what it came down to was just kind of you know beeline pitching michigan and also discussing basketball philosophy and because guess what ward manual is not a basketball guy he's not going to be able to talk about x's and o's of basketball with you i mean that's just the way it is so it's it, it was a talk about lots of recruiting philosophy NIL, um, just general basketball talk in, in general. And I think May is a lot 
similar to beeline the, than people yes. realize and the two hit it off that's, that's becoming obvious i agree yeah so i i think this is a very beeline-esque hire and i don't know what people's thoughts about that if, if i say that but i think it's a very good thing um i think the closer that you can get to continuing beeline's program the better you are and now with with may putting an emphasis on nil you know good things will happen. I think I, I, I believe good things will happen with this basketball program sooner rather than later. So, I mean, yeah, as your average fan mentions here, I know, um, you know, may hasn't, hasn't proven much. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of that success has got to do with the final four run with FAU, but it's FAU, right? You know, I mean, they, it's not easy to win there. And so, I mean, give me a guy that's, that's winning, but, you know, uh, I, yeah, it's, well, I, I Brock, think it's a good higher. And, and I think it's, it, this will bode well for Michigan's future. Brock and I talked about that when we went through the candidates last week, the, the, the idea of the, the final four run and, and buying into just that, that, that makes me a little nervous. That was kind of my hang up with may, but the more I've looked into really what he inherited at FAU, what resources he had available and just how successful he really was. I, I feel better about it than I did a couple weeks ago. Yeah. When I'll be honest, when the news originally broke, I wasn't, I wasn't a hundred percent sold and I'm still not a hundred percent sold on the hire, but, and I, I do agree with what your average fan, what your average fan said it a lot of it does have to do with the final four and this year you know fau goes they get an eight seed and i i'll be honest i'm i'm not an expert on the fau roster i don't know you know if they if they lost a key player or two between last year and this year or what what happened there but the fact that john beeline was a part of this hiring process for me personally makes this hire a lot more comfortable for me, I'm a lot more comfortable with the hire, knowing that John Beeline was there asking the questions and it wasn't just Ward Manual working through it. Obviously, obviously Beeline w helped a ton um, and Ward's not totally incapable of hiring his own head basketball coach. But, you know, John Beeline, the greatest Michigan basketball coach in history, being there, asking Dusty May the questions, you know, picking his brain about certain things. It it helps. It, um, so yeah, I, I'm still not 100% sold just because a lot of it is based on that Final Four run, and, and they didn't have as great of a year this year. But I have faith that that uh, John Beeline and Ward Manuel heard what they needed to hear in order to in order to trust Dusty May to get this program back to where it needs to be. You know, and sometimes a lot of it's just fit, right? Does Michigan fit May? Does May fit Michigan? Right? That that's a big piece of it. And, and the beeline conversation, I think, is simple. It's hey, I know what this program was under you. I know what the challenges have been and where the program is now coming through Juwan. Tell me, John Beeline, why you were successful and can I do that now? Right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that's what we need to know. And, and it sounds like too, just from a from a personality standpoint or the, the you know, a, a human element, his family, his wife specifically, it, it sounds like they really like in our, I mean, he's familiar with Ann Arbor for those that don't know, um, but they, they like this community. They, they really like the alumni base. They're, they're really excited to be about a part of this program. And, and that makes me excited too. And look, frankly, I'm old enough to remember when Michigan hired the defending NIT champion and this fan base said, how are we going to get back to the tournament if we're hiring an NIT guy? And then year one, year two, year three, all the way up until year six, people questioned, why are we sticking with this guy? This isn't going to work. And that was John Beeline. So again, I, I think it's a crapshoot when it comes to these coaching hires, unless whatever the equivalent of Jim Harbaugh is, Right. If you're North Carolina and Roy Williams, <laughs> your alumni becomes available, right? Stuff like that. That that's you get in this home run higher category. But I and I don't want to minimize saying like 
minimize May at all. But the fact of the matter is, you know, people are talking about, yeah, but it was only FAU and stuff like that, right? I'm telling you guys, and I, and I don't want to get into it, but the names after May, you wouldn't have been happy. <laughs> just, just being honest with you. And you talk about, we, we brought up Jerome Tang too on the last show, like very similar, long time assistant, two years at Kansas state had the elite eight run with the transfer portal. Like, okay. But I mean, we're, we're starting to talk about to, it, that this is a good thing. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Josh, you kind of touched on it. People have been asking, what 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 do you give to this? I don't know if I'm going to call it rumors or smoke or whatever. NIL admissions moving forward. We've had the admissions conversation a million times. Um, and I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but again, it, it's not the only obstacle. This team missed the tournament with Hunter Dickinson, Kobe Bufkin, and Jet Howard. Right, they were the worst team in the Big Ten this year. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, Caleb Love didn't get in, did go to Arizona. Would have been great to have him here. If you guys think Caleb Love was worth 14 wins or something, I I mean no it, way. you know, come on. The Terrence Shannon thing, I think, was a little bit different too. And I get it. But anyway, basketball's always had a little bit more difficult of a challenge than football just because of the timing of enrollment and things like that. But You've already talked about NIL, and I know some people took this the wrong way when we talked about Jawan and, and how he handled NIL, and a lot, and some players even came out and were like, he fought for us, and blah, blah, blah. There's a difference between fighting for the players and NIL and going to the collectives and working with the groups that can make it better, right? Yeah. Nobody is alleging that Jawan Howard did not care about his players. If anything, that was his greatest strength. Players love Juwan Howard. We know that. We know he had concerns about NIL, all of that. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Asking, not doing. Thank you. God, your average fan like reads my mind all the time. I appreciate you, buddy. So anyway, what, what can you tell me about some of this smoke? Um, and, and I'm assuming you're not going to tell me Michigan is lifting all of the admissions restrictions they've had. <laughs> yeah, I I don't I don't know where that's coming from. I haven't heard that. So I, I don't know where that stuff's coming from. I mean, maybe there is some sort of some sort of concession being made, but they're, they're not going to wholesale change what they're about just for athletics. I mean, go to school, go to class, get the grades and you'll have, you'll have credits. So I, I don't know. Um, but I mean, the, the fact that the notion that I, I've seen this, these comments a couple of times that, you know, Juwan, um, you know, didn't get anything in there, giving everything to May. Well, May's working for it. And, you know, and I, and I know I I took some flack for from the players uh, when I posted what I did about NIL last week. And, you know, I, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not pulling bullshit from thin air and, and making this stuff up. I have people high ranking people from multiple collectives that have told me that Juwan didn't do anything for NIL. I mean, that's fact. I yeah. didn't make that use, up. Use your eyes guys. Yeah. You, you, can go, you can go to the collective site and see the list of all of the events and Michigan basketball had one signing event total. Their first one was just this October when they had the massive pep rally event. The only player they sent was Joey Baker, right? You've yeah. seen the cheese at those who stay campaign. You've seen the football collective work. So yeah, sorry. I, I just, but I wanted to defend you. Cause I thought that was a little, crazy. no, I didn't. I mean, and I don't care. I mean, the players are standing up for their guys. I mean, whatever they're, they're, they were the worst Michigan basketball team in decades. I mean, that speaks for itself right there. They didn't, they just, they didn't get it done. I mean, there, there wasn't enough there to get it done. So yeah, I'm not doubting that Juwan Howard went to bat for his players. I mean, that's not, what the point is. Yeah. He went to bat for his players to get money, but you got to work for NIL dollars and he didn't do it. And I mentioned in the art, in the uh, post I made, he has cost, um, he has, he has cost uh, uh, collectives thousands of dollars of canceled, um, uh, of, uh, not down payments, uh, deposits, for events where he had to can where he canceled last minute. And I'm not saying this because of the, the surgeries or anything like the heart thing. This was pre heart problems. So right. this isn't, that isn't because of that. 
And again, I'm not making this up. People in the collectives are telling me this stuff. They're the ones responsible to get the pay for these events. So it, it's just, I, I, you know, the, the, the notion that, you know, that, that Juwan was, was begging for NIL dollars. I mean, yeah, he might've been, but you gotta work. You gotta work for it. I mean, show me, show me where Juwan was working. Uh, show me, show me how hard Juwan was working. Show me. I'm waiting. Crickets. You missed on a bunch of guys. You, you're recruiting stunk at the end. I agree. I the, mean, winning, the winning is absolutely a big Winning, piece. yeah. Winning but again, Go to the collective sites. Jim you got to kiss some ass. Quotes are all over those sites, man. I don't know what to tell you. You got to kiss some ass, hug a, hug a couple of babies, take a picture, go out there, and, and go out there. Yeah. I mean, just because your name is Juwan Howard, people aren't going to throw money at you. What are they throwing their money at? What are they doing? These people want their asses kissed. They want to feel special. They want to feel all nice and these big donors. They want to feel all cutesy that they're important because they got their money and then they're allowed to go see grown some some kids change in a locker room before a game because they, they the gave access. them hundred thousands of dollars. It's, it's about access. it's about the access. Yep. And people weren't allowed to go to practices. So most people weren't allowed to go to practices. It, it's just, there was a whole thing. It, it, it's, it's, you know, uh, say what you will. The result, it's it. The proof is in the pudding and the pudding was a little shit puddle. There it is. Okay? So, <laughs> I mean, as soon as he said pudding, I knew. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, now that's the past. Fast forward to May. It's so, gonna be May. Yeah, it's gonna be May, and there's gonna be NIL dollars because he's already putting in the work. He's had he's got multiple meetings. I know for a fact he's got one NIL meeting or one meeting set up this week with some people to get the lay of the land, major boosters, major donors, um to get the general sense of the NIL. And he's got a meeting in a couple of weeks with a major uh collective to get things set up. There's a plan. And the, the 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 quote I tweeted out today, I want to I want to read it a hundred percent. I don't want to make I don't want to hold on. Let me look for it real quick. Go through my end. He's going to be so much more involved. That's from someone in a couple from a collective, a high ranking person in a collective. He's had how many? Guess how many conversations he's had with Dusty May. One. He had one phone call with Dusty May the other day. And he already feels that way. And he already feels that way. Wow. So there's a concert. There's a there's an effort to if you effort yourself with nil, you're gonna get money. It's not hard to get money in Michigan. These donors want to throw their money at you, but they want to feel special. It's like yeah. the football program. It's like what Sharon Moore's doing. You know, hiring a GM. You know, Michigan now hired a um. I forget what the title of the thing was, but the, the owner, the, the guy who helped fa uh, found uh, Empower with Jim Harbaugh, mm -hmm. he's running, um, he's like an NIL liaison with, with the football program. The, the, get the resources. The resources are there. You have to go out and get it. Just because you can't just be like, I'm Dusty May. Give me your money, please. It doesn't work that way. It, it doesn't work that way. And it doesn't work that way with um, with the athletic department as a whole when they ask for donations every year. They ask for donations. People get pissed off when their alma mater sends them emails saying, oh, your donation will help so-and-so today. Yeah, that's because they have to go out and get it. They're not going to – you can't sit there and expect money to fall into your lap just because you're Michigan. And I think football learned that the hard way. Yeah. I think at the beginning, they learned that the hard way is that you can't just expect the money to fall into your lap. You got to adapt. You got to be People, smart and you got to go on return on their investment. Yeah. And that can be yeah. results. That can be access. I mean, it, exactly. It's and and, and I'm not, and, for, and to, for the team NIL member. shouldn't be funded by fans, the small time fan. And I'm, and I, I'm not calling it's the small time fans. It's what, it's what they are. I mean, they, they have, you know, the, the people that will donate a hundred dollars at a time. I mean, yeah, that, that adds up, but you're not doing a hundred thousand dollars at a time and you're not. Yeah, but 
players. But even with that, Josh, that perfect example of the ROI thing. If if I'm a dad and getting my kid to a football game is a tough deal, which it is, tickets have gone up, parking has gone up, concessions has gone up. Yeah. I can bring my young son to the Michigan spring game to get him in that stadium. And then I can go to this pep rally and he can meet and take pictures with and get autographs from all of these players that are larger than life to them. If you're going to ask me for 50 or 60 bucks and I'm creating a memory like that with my son, I can do that. Cause I'm with you. The entire thing disgusts me in a lot of ways that like, Michigan, Big Ten, college football, all these guys are making millions and billions and we're asking fans <laughs> to essentially fund this. But when it comes to the big donors, you're 100% right. I need return on investment. And momentum's real, right? Somebody brought it up. Winning obviously brings money in. We've seen the result of the national championship. But Brock, um, I don't know. We threw a lot out there. I'm sure you're going <laughs> to throw a And throw I, I don't want to say something real quick. Oh. I say something real quick. No, like real quick. <laughs> real quick and I'm done. For basketball, it would only take a couple million dollars to get a field of team, a good team. Football, you're talking about $14 million or so. I mean, 12 to anywhere from 12 to 10. Let's okay, let's say 10 to $14 million for a really good team. I mean, you can do it. You can, if you put in the effort, you can get a couple million dollars easy out of someone. That's a tax write off for some rich dude somewhere. So it's not, it's not hard to get that kind of money for a basketball team. You're not, these NIL deals aren't that expensive for basketball players. They just aren't because there's less players, obviously. So again, it's, it's not hard to drum up a couple million dollars if you go out and get it. It's really not. And so that's why you're seeing more concerted effort on, with Sharon Moore. And now you're going to, see that at least that's what dusty may has told people obviously actions speak louder than words but dusty may has been on the job for like three days so i mean like you got to let it let it let it play out so that's it that's my rant i'm done yeah i don't have i don't have much more to add other than dusty may has his intro introductory press conference tomorrow and oh, i yep. am positive he will be asked about NIL. If no one else asks, then I'll ask. Uh, but I'm interested to hear what he has to say in terms of that. I don't know how much he's going to, you know, give right away in, in, in the introductory press conference, but a anything I'm, I'm sure fans and, and boosters and whoever it may be, will be, be very, they'll have their ears tuned in to, to what Dusty May has to say about NIL. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to do something similar to what Sharon Moore did, right, in, in, in his early stages coming in. Um, but it, it's clear that he feels good about Michigan in terms of their plan and involvement, the alumni base and the resources that could be out there, the potential, right, to, to, to make this work. And then maybe John Beeline serving some sort of role operationally or whatever to continue to help with that bridge, I think would be, I mean, we, we talked about him coming back as coach and the one year thing and all these weird scenarios, something like that is very intriguing to me. Right. And there's potential for some of his assistants to be involved in the staff as well. Um, I I'm excited to see what, what may does to, I don't want a complete bridge back to beeline. I want May to be his own guy and hire who he wants and his own people and, and build his own program. Um, but when you got John beeline sitting there willing to help, whatever that looks like, whether it's Ward or may, I'm, I'm glad that they, they took that help. So um, get close here. So we'll, we'll wrap up pretty quickly. Uh, once again, guys, over 1500 viewers live with us here. On Hail to the Podcast on YouTube. We appreciate you all sticking with us, comments, asking questions. Anybody, of course, watching this back or listening on Apple or Spotify, please go to YouTube, like and subscribe, notification bell on our channel. We love having you live with us. We, we try to make this as interactive as we can. Uh, the press conference is tomorrow. Like Brock said, Dusty May has already gotten to work <laughs> in a lot of ways, and, and that's going to start with the roster. Right. We, we know that Doug is in the portal. 
Terrace Reed is in the Terrace Reed is in the portal. That was weird. Um, <laughs> ugh, George Washington, uh, and then of course you've got to still nail down your your recruits coming in for twenty four, including Ruth, who hasn't even signed yet. Right. So so there's work to be done there, and there's going to be transfer portal additions <laughs> for sure. Right. Yeah. He's got two or three guys on his roster that people are really intrigued with. You got another year of eligibility left. Um, but we've also heard too a intriguing name, Big Ten player that jumped in and right away people were like, Oh, that'd be a good fit. And it sounds like there could be some mutual interest there. So Josh, is kind of what you're hearing in terms of Dusty May and and what might be the most important thing, the thing that ultimately doomed Juwan, and that that's building a roster. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Wisconsin guard Connor Asesian, um, he hit the portal, what, yesterday, the day before? Um, so, and, and I hear that there's definitely some mutual interest between Asesian and, uh, and Michigan for sure. I know um, I know May is interested. I know there's some, there's like Indiana guys, there's some connections there. And I know, yeah, Asesian would, if, if, Today, if I think if Michigan, I, I'm not, I don't know this for sure, but I think if Michigan pushed for him, I would not be shocked if if they got him. Uh, I don't know if May has has reached out yet. Um, I know he's obviously got a lot a lot on his plate right now, so I don't know what his first priorities are. But um, so yeah, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I know I know for a fact that Asian is interested. He wants Michigan. He want he likes Dusty May. Uh, but you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm, I know Michigan's interested. I know May is interested, but I don't know if, when, uh, they'll reach out or, you know, he makes a decision before Michigan decides to reach out, but I know that there's heavy interest there. And, you know, if the, I would not at all be surprised if this turned out to be a, uh, a commitment for Michigan. So, um, yeah, I mean, a, a sophomore, he'd be able to get through emissions. Uh, he would probably still be academically a sophomore if he were to come through. So that means he just have three years. Um, and, you know, who knows? I, I don't think he's – I don't know if he's an NBA guy or not. But, I mean, you're talking you've got three years to get a degree. So um, the, the, the uh, academics, admissions part of it shouldn't be an issue. So, um, yeah, we'll kind of see how this goes, but you know, I, I think, Hey, I, just, int- I well, didn't want to, we literally spent 30 seconds before the show trying to get me to pronounce his name correctly. <laughs> and I felt really good about it coming in. And when it was time to say it, I didn't want to, <laughs> so, well, and, and I, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to hide who the player was. That was just me. For well, anyone, good, regular, it's a regular sign of a good walker. host. You tee it up, and you let there someone you and you let someone hit it. That's that's the way. That's the way good hosts do. I literally have a tab up with like the pronunciation of his name because anybody who watches the show knows that my brain, I do not do well with with last names for some reason. So, but anyway, yeah. Good, so good catch. <laughs> I thought that was hey, pretty- just just go with Connor E. If uh, yeah. You don't want to, it's a siegen, it's not that hard. There you go. But um, in, the, in the moment, it would have come out estrogen or something. <laughs> estrogen, like, Connor, estrogen, <laughs> right? That's funny. Hey, uh, well, I think if I'm not mistaken, Connor Asegen grew up a Michigan fan. Um, yeah. so that's something to keep in mind, too. Well, it, obviously, it'll play out here in the next few days. And, and dust, like, like you said, Josh, Dusty May's got a lot going on right now, so who knows how quick quickly things will move. But another guy to keep an eye on, in my opinion, is John L. Davis from Florida Atlantic. He's yeah. he's a guy who's got one more year of eligibility and he's he's a stud. Uh he's a he's a guard. I think he averaged like 16 points a game this past season if if my mind is is working correctly. Um so yeah, well, a few guys 18 point huh? two. 18? 18 yep, 18 point two points a game. Above 40% from three. This is a great slash line. Holy crap. Uh 48, 41, 85. I'll take that all day long. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah. And you know, he hasn't entered the portal or anything yet, but in in yeah. 
today's world of college sports, these guys, these guys like to follow their coaches around and, and at this point, no one's really safe from, from entering the portal. So we'll see, but to, to further add on to the roster, if you thought last year was crazy, was crazy in terms of transfers with Trey Jackson, Olivier Kamwa and Amari Burnett, <laughs> just wait for this off season because you're looking at, at, uh, pff, I don't know, you could get seven, eight or nine guys in, in Ann Arbor. It's yeah. going to be absolutely unbelievable. The amount of work that Dusty May is going to have to put into, to feel the roster. And we still don't know about what's going to happen with guys like Terrence Williams and, and Namari Burnett, Will Cheddar. I, I and personally, I'd assume that Jace Howard is going to, you know, find somewhere else to play, but uh, I will, we'll have to see. I mean, you could, you could legitimately be looking at seven, eight or nine guys coming in from the portal, yep. which yep. would just be unreal. Yeah. yeah FAU about- has yeah, three guys that. that could grad transfer right now. That's center. They're three best guys. Yep. The, yeah. The Elijah. Center. What is it? Elijah Martin. Yeah. I think one of them. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yep. That's another guard. And then, yeah. Vladislav Golden, who has yep. been called the Russian Edie. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'll but, take Edie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are three guys that score double digit points, play 25 to 30 minutes. More impressively, both guards average six rebounds or more per game. Uh, play strong defense, hit their free throws, um, and 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 that's a that's a change too. Uh, people are gonna see, and that's Juwan Howard brought an NBA mentality here, and and he was not the only coach in America to try that. Uh, Dusty May is a college basketball coach, man. Three guard yeah. systems, right? Like um, I, I'm going to give a shout out to Dylan from UM Hoops, who oh, he's great. The, the the dude just absolutely loves Michigan basketball. The work he does is incredible. Yep. Um, in a year like this, Brock and Dennis, obviously I've shouted you guys out too, because it's a lot more fun to cover a team when it's winning, <laughs> right? From a job <laughs> standpoint, but especially when it's something you're super passionate about. Um, D- Dylan just does in- incredible work, man. And uh, I've, I've yeah. been seeing some of the things he's been saying, looking into Dusty May and talking about just how sound they are analytically um and and some other things as well so obviously we love you guys following our content but i i think this michigan community when it, when it comes to the beat and the coverage that we have everybody brings their own strength and i am not ashamed to say dylan uh um hoops is, is just one of the best a- across the board and uh if, if you want to feel good about dusty may or have a good idea about where this program is going early response from him has, has been incredible part of the reason i'm buying in more too. So, but uh, he's brought up those guys and potentially their fit and just what this is going to look like forward. Um, I, I'm in a similar spot that I was with football. I, I, I feel like anxiety has faded. There's a lot of unknown, but I'm intrigued. I'm excited. I went from even Jawan stay or go. It was like, what in the world are you going to do with this roster? So now mm-hmm. I, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see this yeah. coaching staff fill out. I mean, I'm excited to see who comes in. Um, and then of course, I mean, it can't get worse than last year. I, I don't know. Do you guys have, this isn't even a fair way to ask it because without the roster, but just in general, I know we're looking at a long-term project in terms of sustained success that we saw with Michigan, the consistent sweet 16 runs national title contender every four years or so, or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. is there, what, what makes you feel good about year one? Do you have any expectations? Are you giving this guy a blank check? Are there some things, whether it's win loss or just the way this team needs to look, what, what, what what do you need to see from Dusty May year one? I think for me, just tangible improvement. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, it's, he's not like he's taking over a team. I mean, he's not taking over a team. I mean, there's no one left. So it's not like you can be have tangible improvement from this. I mean, yeah, you'll have a, probably a couple of holdovers in the same guys, but you're basically taking over just a, yeah, as you said, a blank slate that you can add to your, you know, add to, to your liking. And I, I think that one of the big things that Dusty May brings is that he brings structure on the court. I think what Michigan's biggest problem is, is they didn't, ha- they didn't have structure. Yeah. He ran, they ran stuff and the guys were just standing around, not doing anything. And you're going, well, what the hell are these guys doing? 
And and so if, if there's there's stuff that you know if if in, in, in that regard too, May is very similar to um to Beeline that he likes the structure and he likes that just the the fundamentals and all that stuff. But to also you know to to shout out um hoops too and and, and dylan the analytics really like may too uh, mm-hmm. i've noticed a tweet where he posted all the analytics and they're really impressive during his time at fau so i just think tangible improvement um just structure you know just something that you can build on you know i think that's that's the big thing and you know whether that's nine wins or 10 wins. I mean, yeah, that's not the greatest year, but there's some progress. Yeah. So am I sitting here right now? I mean, I can't sit here and say right now that Michigan's going to the tournament next year. I mean, it's, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of depends on a assistance, you know, what they have around the program and then obviously the players too. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I don't want to say, yeah, they have to make the tournament next year, but, um, yeah, I just I just think as long as there's structure, as long as there's some something tangible where you can say, hey, this was a hell of a big of improvement over what they had, I think you're on to something. And and I, th- I think number one, that starts with assistance. And you know, to answer your average fan in, in the chat there, we haven't really heard anything yet. I know that stuff will start to come out here pretty soon, but um there were rumblings that John Beeline could be offered a role some sort of role on the staff. It's not going to be a, a coaching type of thing, but maybe it was brought up to me that maybe a director of basketball ops type of role yeah. would be there, which, Hey, I think that would be great for him. A low, you know, just a, a low risk type of move that he can just, you know, get his basketball fill, but also doesn't have to go through that grind. So um, there's that part of it too. So uh, a couple of dominoes still have to fall, obviously, but um yeah, I just I think yeah, I think a team that can finish games too. Like just yep. an unbelievable, unbelievably bad program at finishing games. I've never seen anything like it. You know, if they can do that, actually, you know what? That's it. Finish games. If they yeah. can finish games, then they're already on the right track. You know, that's that's all they that's all I need to see. But what what Joe was the before. success rate, Brock, on the the was it Michigan halftime lead and then not cover the spread to lose the game. It was like eight or nine oh. games in a row or something. Oh yeah. Where yep. they had the halftime lead and then ended up not covering. I think it was their first what 19 losses. They failed to cover the spread. Yeah. So yeah that yeah the, I mean, the first I mean, game your thoughts but the, the first time they covered the spread in a loss I believe was the Purdue game. Yeah. Yep. Where they lost by by I don't know 12 eight or twelve or something like that. But <laughs> um <laughs> I mean, it just it's just really unbelievable how bad they were at finishing, and the, the only two that really come to mind that that were close close games that they finished were the the Wisconsin game at home, uh, which I think was in early February, and then they beat Ohio State yep. on I think it was Martin Luther King Jr. Day in, in January. Those are really the only two, and you know that's obviously something I'm looking for. Another thing I'm looking to see is, you know how they're out, how they're competing on the floor. I think a lot of times this past year, you know, we saw a lot of guys just out there really not, they didn't look like they cared. And obviously many of them have now entered the portal. And maybe that was a big reason why is because mentally they were already kind of checked out on the season and, and things, things kind of spiraled a little bit too when Kamwa got hurt and was out for the year, but just, just being out there looking like you want to win basketball games, looking like you're you're interested in competing and, and actually looking like you're interested in being there. I think that's something I'm looking for. And uh, in, in terms of, of tan, tangible, you know, results, it, it's hard to, to, you know, predict anything right now just because there's no roster. There are only four guy, four scholarship guys, but um I don't know, work, work to be flirting at, uh, 500. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I want tangibly, but I I think you're both in the the neighborhood of what I'm thinking, which is I don't want them to be a pushover, like embarrassingly. So, right. Be competitive. 
lose because the better team won and not because you just absolutely cracked the bed. You know, I mean, and to defend the players real quick, because I think it's easy for us to come off like we're tearing into them. Nobody had a harder time with this year than they did. Being on a team like that is very difficult. It's a hard thing to to go through. Um, And a lot of those late game collapses were the result of a poor roster in terms of depth. There was two empty seats. Mm-hmm. Right. We've talked about say what you will about the Caleb Love situation, sat on that for two months and, and didn't have alternatives in place. Yeah. Right. And, and they come into this roster and you've got at the start of the year, Llewellyn's still hurt. Doug's playing almost the entire game, every game, doing what he can. And then later you bring up Kamwa injury, right? Doug and his bizarre, you know, suspension, which again should never happen. Right. This is this is all on Juwan. Like that part of it. Somebody brought it up. Like graduating players, them having their grades. Josh, I don't, I don't remember the exact terminology you've used, but there's that NBA environment translated into the way the entire program was run. These guys had too much freedom, arguably. Yep. Right. That, and, and that's exactly it. That's exactly it. You can't so, run this program like an NBA program. You got to yeah, have regimented stuff. And your, they your didn't coach, have regiment stuff. Your coach has got to put you in position to succeed. I, I don't I don't blame these players at all, man. And you know, obviously, I, I've got it up again. This is this is UM Hoops site right here. He has the scholarship chart up, and then just a ridiculous amount of content outside of that. He's got it posted right now. Only three bucks a month. That's not bad. Um, two of these guys, like Brock said, we don't actually know. <laughs> They're technically not counting right now. We've only got four on the roster, right? We don't know about Williams or Howard and their potential to return. Uh, we don't know if Fat Fat Brooks is for sure going to stay with his commitment. We haven't really heard anything about Anderson. Uh, Roofs could be a piece of this. Do, do you even try to get a Doug or a Reed back? I, I don't know. You know, I, I would imagine. I mean, I don't see any path for Doug back after what happened with yeah. the academics mm-hmm. thing. Um, but at minimum, that's seven chairs right now, assuming Williams and Howard come back. Yeah. I mean, and that's wild, man. It's going to be a completely different team next year. Completely. Um, yeah, I just want to see, I mean, it almost became comical. Some of the short clips that were getting shared on Twitter of like the defense, just letting dudes walk by the lack of effort on rebounds. And and again, I know what that feels like, right. For that team where it's like, it just feels inevitable, right? Like once it's, once you start losing, it's really, really hard to stop. (laughs) Right. And, and then of course they're not, they're not oblivious. They saw the things that we were saying and everybody online was saying they're playing in front of near empty arenas. It's just a really difficult environment to succeed in. And that was yeah. a big reason that I thought a change needed to be made was simply because fair or not, even if Juwan did come in and say, Hey Ward, here's my plan. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's how we're going to do this. Blah, 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 blah. It's really hard to lift yourself back up from that versus Dusty May coming in and having that fresh, new coach, new momentum, that spark, right? That that's just how it works. Yeah. That's just how, that's just how momentum works. And it's a better, and that's why you make the change. Um, So yeah, the change has been made. May will be introduced tomorrow. And wow. If I told you (laughs) a couple years ago that Michigan would be national champions in football, the (laughs) basketball team would not make the tournament for two straight years. And your head coaches are Sharon Moore and Dusty May. It's what a couple years we've had, man. Unbelievable. So, yeah.